to hit the panic button? Well, for most teams, absolutely. You got to let your guys gel and figure out their role. Building teams takes time. But, B.A., there are a few teams that might want to hammer that panic button. Here are the starters for Utah. Jordan Clarkson is out there with George. Then it's Lori Markkinen. Then there's John Collins. And it's Fontecchio in at the three slot. And here are the Jazz. It's a three-point game. Pass to Collins. Here's Fontecchio. Market it outside. For three, Collins buries it from three. Oh, you gotta love the back and forth. Showing real confidence at the arc. Yeah, both teams finding ways to the three-point line and trying to take advantage from distance. Now here's Cunningham. So valuable for them offensively. Adding 22 points a contest. Killian Hayes is a PG and he's got vision, so you get open, he'll find you. Cunningham against George. Pass to Markkinen. To the left wing. Six to shoot. Clarkson passes to George. It's Markkinen on the wing. Three-pointer. The rebound by Stewart. Given his range, you'd expect him to capitalize on that open. George against Cunningham. Three-pointer, Stewart. The rebound by the Jazz. Well, that's not a shot he's ever going to pass up, and he shouldn't. Despite the miss, no defender anywhere near him. He's got to shoot that one. Some sick ball skills displayed right there. And he's not the guy you expect to pull that off. Pass to Hayes. Over Clarkson. Here's Stewart. And the layup is good off the glass. And there is no quit in what Isaiah Stewart will do on the glass. Utah has gone one or two from three-point land so far. Talking about the Detroit Pistons, this is a team that has lacked star power recently, Brent. Well, they've drafted some guys that are still hoping to be potential stars in the league. And B.A., there might be a couple guys on that roster right now that can do that. But front office is trying to find somebody where they can put a stake in the ground and say, this is our star, and this is who we're moving forward with. Maybe a little false confidence there. Not a high percentage shot for him. Coaches will tell you that's a bad shot, but when your teammates tell you that, you probably got to think about it. Utah trailing here. Clarkson outside. Collins with a screen on Cunningham. Here's Clarkson. Collins, a good look. Gets an open look and hits it. Collins has got five. From the middle, part of Collins' game that is developing. Nice work, and that's paying off. Cunningham against George. Outside Bogdanovich. That falls. Nice feed that time from Cunningham. Bogdanovich has got his second basket on the night. George against Cunningham. George's shot is good. And just muscling it in, George, very aggressive. For Detroit, they've gone four of seven, shooting a solid percentage. Hayes, the pass to Cunningham. Stewart, a screen on George. Cunningham finds Stewart. And that one's good, Cunningham. And that's exactly how you attack Link. I love how he doesn't lack assertiveness. Yeah, hard to stop it there if you're the big man. That's just too good a shot and great concentration. Now here's George. Right now contributing around 10 and a half points a game. Pass to Fontecchio. Jacks up a three. The rebound by Stewart. Stewart's got four rebounds in the game. Cunningham passes to Durant. Cunningham on the wing. George defending. Back to Cunningham. He takes it in. The Pistons need to get one up quick. Here's Stewart. 
And there's another one for the Pistons. Man, he's got that touch working tonight, shooting the ball very well to start this one. Time called here. The Jazz decide to talk it over. And this is their first time matched up with the Pistons this year. They split the two games they played last year. Both teams really struggled to find wins throughout the season. Yeah, they matched up very evenly, and that's not a compliment to either side. Last season was a struggle for both squads, and now they're each looking to turn the corner. Bagley's checked in for Stewart. Thompson comes in for Bogdanovich. And Ivy subbed in for Hayes. All right, the Jazz making a change here. A minute six left in the first. Collins with a screen on Ivy. Collins outside. The three-pointer off the mark. And here's Thompson. He'll bring it up for Detroit. Leading by five. They couldn't put the pieces together, losing their last matchup with Orlando. They failed to create enough good looks. The ball movement just wasn't quite where it needed to be. Yeah, lots of ups and downs. One good possession, two bad ones, one good one. They could never get on a steady run and play some solid offense. Nine seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. Sexton passes to Horton Tucker. Collins against Bagley. Outside Sexton. Down to five on the shot clock. Over Cunningham. And another miss by Utah. Well, they shouldn't be giving that shot to anyone, but they certainly shouldn't be giving it to him. That's a big break for the defense. This team looks to him to score the ball. They feel good when he's taking the shots. And so it's the Detroit Pistons closing out the quarter with a seven-point lead. Great shot selection right now. Keeping the game simple and getting high percentage looks. All right, stick around. We'll be right back after this. Hope you've enjoyed the broadcast so far. Halfway through the first half in this one. All right, guys, let's get your take on the scoring breakdown for the Pistons. Well, you got to be impressed with how selfless they've been so far. Their passing has been simply outstanding. Well, a lot of the players are doing a good job as well of scanning the interior part of the paint. All those inside looks, those are paying off. The Jazz on offense. They trail by seven. They couldn't put the pieces together last time out, losing to the Clippers. 
and their body language was unimpressive. They looked defeated much of the night, and because of it, they took the L. Yeah, and they didn't get, like, blown out in that game, but it felt deflating, and it felt like they got crushed. And they could not get anything going, no matter who they had out on the court. In at forward, it's Thompson and Bogdanovich. Then there's Jaden Ivey. Then it's Marvin Bagley. And it's Sasser in at the one spot. That's the group for Detroit starting the second. Two open that time. They didn't look easy. Bogdanovich has got nine points. And there's so much on-court communication. Brent, what types of things are being called out by players? Well, on defense, B.A., it's pretty much everything. You're trying to read the opposing team's coach, try to hear the call of the play coming, try to yell out to your teammates so predictably they know what movements are happening. And then within engagement of that play, you're calling your switches, you're calling where your help is, and that should happen 75 times a night. So by the end of the night, the, the team that communicates the most usually ends up winning the game. Utah trailing here. And the foul on Jaden Ivey. That's his first foul. Clarkson's checked in for Utah. George comes in for Horton Tucker. Substitution on the floor. And so it's Utah with it. Get there, get there. Pass to Clarkson. Launches it. Drills it from deep. Clarkson's gotten himself going with a triple. His first basket of the game. Like to see more of that from Clarkson. Just get more consistent from the three-point line. Steps up and knocks that one down. Stewart is screen on Sexton. 11 feet out. Ivy's shot is off. He's got so many ways to score in the post. Just nifty, uses fakes. You have to have a body on him every time he's down there. Now here's Sexton. He's coming off a 13-point game against the Clippers. For Ivy. And again, it's Utah. Sexton looking good from that spot on the floor. Detroit has gone one of two from deep in the second quarter. You know, when analyzing the game of Colin Sexton, this is a guy who can score from all three levels, Grant. You know, this is what his team has asked him to do, to be aggressive on offense and to shoot the ball with confidence too, B.A. They get the rebound. Hayes, shot's good. Looking really comfortable. Hayes on the inside knew he had enough room. And we're just over two and a half minutes into the second. Pass to Markkinen. Clarkson outside. Now George. The three. Here's Kessler. Kicks it out to Clarkson. Takes the three. He's looking good. Two buckets and three attempts. Wow. <laughs> Their opponent is doing a tremendous job spacing the floor. Ivy outside. Bagley sets a screen. Floats one. Gets it to go. That makes him two for three in this game. Such a creative player. I love watching Ivy do his thing in the pick and roll. Hayes against George. And the foul on Jaden Ivey. That'll be a second foul of the game. This is one where the second foul is probably going to cost you some minutes in this game. Duran, he's checked in for Bagley. And Utah with a change here, too. Fontecchio's checked in. Just under three and a half minutes played here in the second quarter. Clarkson against Ivy. Pass to Kessler. Just five to shoot. The basket drops, and he gets fouled on the shot. One free throw coming his way. When they get their opportunity to punch it inside, they don't hesitate. And a closer look here at the scoring breakdown for the Jazz. Well, we're in the era of the three-point basket. So if you want to win games in this league, you have to connect from deep. And they have been thus far. And let's make sure that that selfish nerve doesn't get tapped. Because right now there's great ball movement. They're setting each other up. Let's see if that maintains. And the free throw, no good. Detroit has gone three of five from the perimeter in this game. Hayes, the pass to Stewart. And finished off by Stewart. And Stewart, even though he's built a little stocky, can get up off the deck that time with a huge jam. George feels it out a bit. Pass to Fontecchio. 
to George over Cunningham George no good the battle of the boards has been something to watch George against Cunningham and the foul is called he missed it so he's got a couple of free throws coming his way and the former number one overall pick Brent Cade Cunningham has flashed greatness when he's healthy well his vision and his instincts BA they are elite and I just feel like with more and more playing time once he's fully healthy he's going to start to be able to manipulate the game a lot like Doncic does with his vision to set guys up and make their job easier to score the basketball. Free throw good from Cunningham. You see the raw talent that Kate Cunningham has, and with hard work and the proper focus, this guy is capable of big, big things. Both free throws good from Cunningham. A great player on a great roll at the charity stripe. The D has got to be careful about being too aggressive on him and sending him back for freebies. Collins with a screen on Hayes. Here's Clarkson. The Jazz again can't hit. Well if you believe in the numbers that mid range shot is not a high value shot even with little or no defense on you. To the inside. To the wing on the left. Thompson scanning the floor to the paint. Duran, no good. That's the only kind of defense that's going to cut the mustard here tonight. You got to stay on top of a guy like that who could play at such a high level offensively. For Detroit, they've gotten four of eight shots to drop in the second. 43 seconds left in the first half of this one. And that one's good. Cunningham's got eight. Yeah, some retro action from Kate Cunningham, the mid range J. For Utah, they've gone six of 11 here in the second quarter. It's George on the wing. He's watched by Cunningham. Collins passes to Clarkson. Off the mark there with a three. And here's Thompson. He'll bring it up for the Detroit Pistons. It's a five-point game. Their next game playing at home as the Pacers come to town. It'll be the second of three straight games on their home floor. Now Cunningham. Stewart screen on George. Here's Cunningham. Oh, and the release was before the buzzer, but it's off target. And the first half comes to a conclusion in a game that's been very close so far. Pistons ahead. They're up by five. And we'll be right back after halftime to get the third quarter underway. Hello and welcome. Before we take a look at the action from the first half, a brief overview of some upcoming games. They're staring at a rough road ahead, the kind that can break you down. But this is what separates good from great, the way you take on obstacles in your path. Hmm. To be formidable, to ultimately win a chip, you have to be good away from home. And moving forward, a lot to like about that first half for the Pistons. Their activity on the backboard has been excellent, hustling to create opportunities for themselves and preventing second chance points at the other end. Yeah, that's a clear advantage for them for sure. And that is going to do it for us. Let's get back to some second half action with Brian Anderson and company. If you're just joining us, we played through the first half in a game that's been fairly even so far. 
Tell you one guy who's been getting it done is Boyan Bogdanovich. Yeah, he plays such a smart first half, maximizing his opportunities offensively. Yeah, I'm thinking back to the first half. I'm wondering, did he take a low percentage shot? Everything efficient. Kick it off the second half. Here's Will Hardy's five. We've got Laurie Markkinen, George out there with Jordan Clarkson. Then there's John Collins, and it's Fontecchio in at the small forward position. Four on the clock. The Jazz need to get one up in a hurry. And that one's good, Clarkson. And Markkinen should do that more. He's got the height to survey the defense and try to find the open man. All right, let's get a report from Ali. Well, Laurie Markkinen has become the go-to scorer for the Jazz. Coach Will Hardy said, quote, it's not easy going from being a role player to being the guy. There's an emotional part of being counted on like this, and he's handled it very well. To have the evolution that he has had is something that he should be very, very proud of. Brian? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Ali. Good stuff there. Now here's George. Clarkson's got room. It's good. Set up beautifully by George. Clarkson's got 11 points. A growing aspect of George's game. He's working to become a strong facilitator. Hayes, the pass to Cunningham. The rebound by Markkinen. Well, even though he misses that one, the defense has got to talk about that. And that's a bad miscue. And you can't give up looks like that all game long. Now here's George. Markkinen right side. Can't get the go-ahead bucket. Detroit has gone three of six from deep so far. Hayes with it. Providing this team some offensive stability. A little over ten points a game. Duran with the bucket. Two teammates connecting right there. Slick feed. Two minutes gone in this third quarter now. Pass to Fontecchio. Good D by Bogdanovich. Well, the D's so tight on him, it makes him alter his shot. And an easy chance turns into a tough one because the defense is swarming. The rebound by the Jazz. Collins has got four rebounds now. Clarkson outside. Oh, sweet move. And his fifth basket. Now five for eight. Looking comfortable out there. Well, a lot of ways that Clarkson can beat you. Most of the time it's off the dribble, but when he's shooting the ball well, he's a dangerous offensive player. Cunningham passes to Bogdanovich. The shot's good on the assist by Cunningham. Cunningham's got his fourth assist with that last one. Doing a lot of nice work now from the field. He's helped get them this lead, and now he's helped them keep it. Now here's Clarkson. 13 points in the game. Softly drops in the floater. Clarkson's got nine points now in the second half. Uh, he's been incredible in this half. Anytime he pulls up from outside, you think that's bottoms. Out of bounds. It'll be Utah's ball. Let's take a look at the numbers for Cade Cunningham. Thompson, he's checked in for the Pistons. And Utah with a change here, too. Kessler's checked in. Just under three and a half minutes played here in the third quarter. Pass to Clarkson. Back to George. Shot clock at six. And the ball out of play. The Pistons will have it. All right, let's look back on the last month now and see which rookie players were leading the way in assists per game. Keontae George, number one. I really like how he sees the floor. A selfless distributor who enjoys hitting those guys in their spots. We've gone about three and a half minutes here into the third. Pass to Cunningham. The three. Another three for Detroit. Their defense has to do a better job of smothering those shooters. Clarkson against Hayes. Clarkson outside. Collins high post. Now here's Kessler. Five to shoot. Collins outside. 
Here's Fontecchio. No good from outside. He got his defender off his feet with a pump fake, but couldn't knock it down. Cunningham passes to Thompson. Rebounded by the Jazz. George outside. Pass to Kessler. George against Stewart. And here's Clarkson. Over Hayes. That one rolls around and rims out. Thompson passes to Cunningham. George against Hayes. Spins. Down low. Stewart, left side. Takes a three. Out to Thompson. It's stolen by Clarkson. And now the Jazz on the run in transition. It's George on the wing. Pass to Kessler. Clarkson against Hayes. Shot clock at five. Collins with a screen on Hayes. Clarkson for three. And another miss by Utah. Detroit has gotten two of four threes to fall here in this third quarter. Kicks it out to Cunningham. Feet out. Cunningham hits it with a hand in his face. Yeah, really nothing you could do. Cunningham burying that shot over the difficult defense. And we've reached the end of the third. Pistons ahead. Up six. And right after this, we'll bring you the start of the final quarter right here on 2K Sports. And it's time now to bring you our State Farm assist to the game. You know, I'm kind of stoked that this was the choice because I love this pass. A remarkable find. He put his court vision on full display. Well, a great job with the eyes. And what separates great playmakers, as we know, is peripheral vision. Three tense quarters behind us. One more to go. Thanks for being with us as we get ready for the fourth. Ivy at the two with Thompson at the three. Boyan Bogdanovich out there with Marvin Bagley. And it's Sasser in at the point. That's the five on the floor for the Pistons. Bogdanovich, that's good. This defense just can't stay connected to shooters. Utah trailing here. Outside Horton Tucker. Pass to Markinen. To the middle. Here's Kessler. Oh, and a beautiful feed leads to a monster jam. Well, that passing really the final part of the offensive puzzle for marketing. Sexton against Ivy. Bogdanovich with it. On the wing, Thompson. It's good, and he drew contact on the shot, so he will go to the line. A three-point play opportunity. And a closer look here at the scoring breakdown for the Pistons. Well, the coaching staff has to love what they're seeing on offense. There's so many assists because how this team is moving the ball. And there's another thing going on right now for them that has to get their confidence up, and that's the three ball. I mean, it's been falling for them, and they're locked in, and with that outside shot going, that's a big difference maker. That free throw is good from Thompson. Part of why Asar Thompson was an attractive prospect was his raw athleticism. I mean, he can run the floor, he can easily jump up to the rim, and scouts absolutely love that. Pass to market it. Rebounded by the Pistons. Thompson's got five rebounds in the game. 
You have to credit their effort. I mean, they've done an amazing job on the glass. Sexton up top. Here's Markkinen. And here's Kessler. Ivy defends. Outside Horton Tucker. Puts up a three. Knocks down the triple. Horton Tucker's got his first bucket of the game, and he's on the board for three. And not where he earns his money, that three-point shot. But he's a good shooter from that range if he's got space. Bogdanovich finds Ivy. Back to Bogdanovich. Bagley passes to Thompson. Trying to come right back with a three of his own, but it's no good. Bogdanovich against Sexton. Here's Horton Tucker. And here's Markkinen. The seven-footer, Markkinen, using that length. Well, the defense didn't slow Markkinen down one bit. He was able to stay on stride. And the Pistons call time here. Substitution here for Utah. Collins, he's checked in for Kessler. Fontecchio comes in for Abaji. Clarkson's checked in for Sexton. And it's George in for Horton Tucker. A moment to hear from Allie LaForce. Thanks, guys. I got a chance to hear what Monty Williams was saying to his team. Despite the lead, Coach was stern with the guys, mentioning to the team, do not let up. I've seen some big comebacks in this league, and this is not over. An interesting message. BA? All right, Allie, thanks once again. Cunningham looking it over. Bogdanovich from long range. Great positioning on the putback. And the Pistons lead by seven. I'll tell you what. They've been aggressive and they've been physical. Inside. Here's Clarkson. It's good. Set up beautifully by George. George has got three assists in the game. Well, Clarkson can get inside. He's athletic to do that and then needs to touch in that area. Showed it off there. Now here's Cunningham. Pass to Stewart. Now Hayes. Over Clarkson. Hayes misses. Not great numbers, but great effort in this one. Sounds funny, but I think he's been a positive for them. And the Pistons pushing it up now. Well, if you're just tuning in, welcome. We played about three and a half minutes into the fourth quarter here. Cunningham against George. Bogdanovich with a screen on George. And here's Cunningham outside. And he can't get that one. And here's George. He'll bring it up for the Utah Jazz. Trailing by five. Hayes against Clarkson. Three-pointer. And again, it's Utah with a three. This guy's a gamer. Detroit has gone only one of four from the perimeter here in this fourth quarter. Duran, the screen. Cunningham passes to Duran. The defense there doing whatever they can to protect the rim. All right, guys, what do you think about the offensive approach we've seen so far for the Jazz? Well, they have owned the offensive perimeter throughout this game. 
finding lots of openings and turning them into big shots. We probably have to touch on as well that tonight their penetration has been awesome. I mean they put force on this game attacking off the bounce and a willingness to do that has paid off. He drops the first one and that makes it a three point lead. He's unable to get the second one. Utah has got seven of their 16 three-point attempts to go in. Pass to Clarkson to tie it up. Duran with the rebound. Duran's got rebound number eight here already in the game. Hayes finds Cunningham. Collins with the rebound. Collins has got six rebounds here tonight. Fontecchio, the pass to Markkinen. And Clarkson, here we go. And there it is for him. Clarkson's got 22. Well, Jordan Clarkson tries to be aggressive for most of the game. And when he's looking to score from the mid-range, if he knocks a couple down, he can be dangerous. Now here's Cunningham. Oh, what impressive shot from Cunningham. And Kate Cunningham stepping up in a big moment for this squad. Clarkson against Hayes. Collins with a screen on Hayes. Here's Clarkson. And there's a whistle. He'll head to the line to shoot two. the lead down to just three and this is not the guy the defense wants at the line in this situation Clarkson is a very consistent free throw shooter that one falls so he hits both of them hey, a steady hand at the line in a tough situation he narrows it to a one possession game George against Cunningham. Stewart, the screen on George. Cunningham passes to Stewart. And it's good! Wow. That takes steady nerves right there. <laughs> Not backing down from this moment here. When the game is close, he kicks it up a notch. Timeout called the Jazz. They're down by four. There's 48 seconds left in the fourth.
There's 48 seconds left in the fourth quarter. George outside. Pass to Fontecchio. Clarkson against Hayes. Collins with a screen on Hayes. Clarkson for three. Cash! And that one brings them within one. Jordan Clarkson coming through in the clutch. And the Pistons with possession here. They've led by as much as 10. And an intentional foul right there. So the first one drops, and that'll put him up two. And a great opportunity to build that kind of equity and trust for Kay Cunningham stepping to the line to try to seal this one. And so he drops them both, and it's a three-point game. Huge free throws, bumps the lead up to three, and now they simply have to guard against the three ball. Time called here. The Jazz decide to talk it over. They're behind by three. 27 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Clarkson against Hayes. Now here's Clarkson. He's guarded closely. To the inside. Collins. And it's in. Oh, what a sensational bucket. That brings him within one. And an intentional foul there stops the clock. Yeah, no, you had to do that. I mean, you can't allow them to dribble out the top. Free throw is good, and that'll put him up too. It's exciting to look at a young player like Killian Hayes, who's got a lot of raw potential and is still fighting to find his way and how he's going to make solid contributions to his team. And looking to even the score with a huge three. Uh, you can bet that's what they're looking for this late in the game. They need that three. George, no good. And they need to stop the clock, so there's the foul. Yeah, and there's no question they have to foul. Now, I'm sure they would have preferred to avoid it. First of two, no good. A heartbreaker. And this is who you want at the line. Cunningham showing what true leadership is all about. 
And the second of two is good. And that gives him a four-point cushion. So it's a narrow victory for the Pistons. Pulling it out for the W. That was an incredible night of hoops. A tremendous finish. They waited until the very last moment to seal it. And so many times we see these close games won by the home team. And that'll do it, folks. For Brent Berry, Allie LaForce, and Grant Hill, this is Brian Anderson thanking you for tuning in. Now it's time for the New Balance Player of the Game, Cade Cunningham.